paintball. The Battle of Riva Ridge has begun. Got it. I think one of the main reasons paintball is like coming to the West Point game and see it as a prestigious event, maybe compared to other scenario paintball games, is that A, the ref and crew, the cadets are top notch. And B, I think a lot of uh, scenario players are, are just uh, happy to be able to play here on, on the same ground that some of these leaders were trained on. Three, two, one! To be able to play this game here, and, and meet the people that we meet who attend this school. It's just an honor to even be here, let alone even walk the premises is, is really an honor. So it's a, it's a great time every year. I always love it. More than anything else, it just adds a sense of realism. You gotta send them. Anybody that's heading in now, I make just, we're just pushing them up to that left-hand side. The senior leadership within the cadets of the West Point Paintball Club use uh, all the planning procedures that they learn at West Point to develop this game and develop every trip that they go on. So they'll use troop leading procedures and the operations order format to design this game and design all the logistical stuff that goes on. With all that stuff has a plan around it and they all use what they've learned here at West Point. If anybody who plays paintball knows it's not a very cheap sport and so this is how our paintball team exists. For this weekend I am the primary Milsim cadet in charge so I'm running the scenario side of things. I've been running registration and making sure that the field and the game runs as smoothly as possible. We do know that caution tape needs to come down around this cliff. Probably the biggest hurdle we got to do today is to tape off the field to make sure everybody knows the boundaries of the field. Towards the end of the road up here, you can kind of start seeing it slope down a little bit where it's a little safer for the, for the guys who can go run down there. Just go take that all the way down to the end of the water line, and that's going to serve as a new border so we don't have guys cliff diving off into the lake. I got some plebes up there putting the last uh, flag point up. It's about a 250 foot elevation change from the lake up to the top of where we're doing. That's one thing that a lot of people like about our West Point game is that people know that the train's going to be crazy and you're going to be running up hills and across cliffs and things like that and so your plans change so you have to be able to communicate with your team to be able to overcome those obstacles. Especially with scenario paintball, there's a great family unity about it. A lot of scenario players, when you go to a game, you know, they're you know dogged adversaries out on the field, but when they come off the field, They'll share a bratwurst with you at the campsite and you know everybody busts each other's chops about how we went and tell war stories and lies. It's a, very similar to a military fraternity, but the scenario paintball one is, is, is unique amongst sports because they're so competitive and yet so friendly off the field. It's uh, Friday, the first day of the game. You can see the huge line of cars that are coming up, you know, just trying to get everybody parked right and camped right and then we can get started with business. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Engler. We're at West Point Military Academy. I make custom paintball guns. We've made all sorts of stuff. We've made Browning BARs from World War II. We've made machine guns. I've made Gatling guns. We, we'll, we'll do anything as long as it's got a paintball gun inside of it. Thompson submachine gun based off of Tittman's A5 marker. One of my signature pieces. It is the, one of the markers that I'll carry on field tomorrow as well. We've made just one of a kind stuff that is just off the wall. This is the battle rifle based off the video game Halo 2. Somebody asked me to make one. I made one for him out of aluminum sailboat mast. This will probably be the ninth or tenth game I've generaled here for, for the West Point cadets. I plan on winning tomorrow and Sunday, but it's going to be a, a hard fought battle for both sides. But in the end, if the players just have a good time, that's all I really care about. And that's what we're all here for, It's just to have fun, because it's just a game. got a very, very good turnout. The campers are getting their campsite set up. 
registration's open, the compressed air station is up and running, all the vendors are in, so we have everything we need to make our game go. I've played every kind of sport there is, and it's honestly the best sport I've ever played for teamwork, for hard work, for dedication, and just, it's a great feeling every time you come out here. The proceeds we get from this, this event uh, actually funds the cadets' activities for the rest of the year. The cadets do a pretty good job of making sure that the paintballers have a good game. Because uh, the really important part is, is that they enjoy themselves and, and come back again next year. We really appreciate you guys coming out. We can't do it without you guys, okay? I want to express my gratitude to you. Uh, if, if you guys didn't come out here, we couldn't fund the paintball team. We don't get money from the government. It's because of you guys coming to our game that enables us to exist. All right, so game rules, armbands. All right, the armbands you got given, all right? Make sure that they're on your right arm or the right top of your vest at all times. Our generals can only be killed with headshots. All right, chrono speed is 290. All right, we got the main chrono station on the other side here behind me, shooting into the lake, and there'll be chronos at the entrance and exit to your field at your respawn points. We're gonna ask you guys to chrono as you come onto the field each time or most every time. It's gotta be shooting under 290. And the one nice thing about playing here at West Point, all firing modes are allowed. It hurts to get shot with the paintball. Everyone is going to get hit before the end of the day, I promise. When you get shot, we're gonna do our best to get you off the field safely. We really will. But you gotta meet us halfway on this, guys. Put that barrel bag on and get that gun in the air. When, when the, the ref, ref is tapping the top of his head and pointing into a position, that is your cue, Gunners, to let the poor guy out. He's had enough, and the ref is trying to give him safe passage back to the respawn area. I don't know why I'm going to tell you this, but don't go swimming. Here's how we play safety kills. If you get point blank onto someone, and we saw this at the last game, some guy, I don't know how he got behind everybody, but he managed to walk up behind a man who was laying in the prone position. He kind of looked around. I think he, didn't, he couldn't believe he got there either. He looked around, he glanced at the ref, and cracked one into this poor man's skull as he stood over him. Let's be gentlemen. Give the guy a chance to surrender. You know, if you don't want to surrender, don't. It's your pain. But give the guy a chance to surrender. You know what's going to happen today, and I'm not going to tell you. Mr. Engler, we know we want a safe, friendly fight. I always enjoy going with or against you, and I sincerely hope we have a great day. I want to see honorable play. We're going to take him out honorably. We're not going to wipe. We're going to have an excellent time. We're going to push him right back to their base. This is our mountain. We're going to push it all day long. If you look up there, you're going to be working on the side of that thing. The field that we're playing on today is a field that I not only trained on in the military, but I also played other West Point games there. So I had pretty much memorized most, most of that field already. We have about 40 cadets that come out and either do refereeing between working at the base, they uh, you know, do registration and sell paint. We're pretty well known for having some good referees because these guys are out here committed and working hard. It's just a the thrill to be able to go out there and see what works and what doesn't. It's a leadership challenge more than anything. Going out there and being able to work with a squad or work with a team, meeting an objective, that's the, that's the thrill of the game. First of all, I'll go through the tank rules. It's pretty much what we always have. The tanks can be immobilized for five minutes by either a grenade or a uh, mine. I don't know if anybody's playing with mines today. Tanks are very important in the game. You want to keep them in the game as long as possible. We're looking forward to some good tank combat today. We have our, uh, our Yacht Panther tank destroyer. Shoots two inch Nerf Vortex rockets. It's mostly for anti-tank. Each ring on the barrel symbolizes the enemy tank we took out. The only thing that could take out a tank would be a small Nerf rocket. Uh, basically, it's a foam rocket, about seven inches long. Or you have taped off kill boxes on the tank itself, where if you fill it up with paint, totally fill it up with paint, you can eliminate a tank that way. If you get hit with uh, one paintball uh, grenade or one mine, 
you'll be immobilized for five minutes. If you get hit with a second in that five minutes, then you'll be out. But if you get hit with one and five minutes passes, you guys are good to go again. If this were to hit another tank, it would bounce off the tank. These are the only thing that is usually allowed on a paintball field uh, because they are safe. There's a lot that goes into the tanks. I built the tanks out of PVC piping, paintball netting, Lexian plastic. This six by six here drives just like a tank. You got two sticks to operate, breaks one side so you can turn on a dime or break the other side, forward, reverse. This is the air system that runs the main cannon on the tank. It's got a regulator on here. I regulate the pressure down to 50 pounds per square inch. This is the main cannon. It's mounted on a swivel where it can go any direction. There's the air chamber, safety pop off. All total with all the pneumatics, the tanks, I've probably got close to $5,000 invested. Paintball is the best hobby uh, in the world. It's so much fun. The adrenaline rush is so intense you could not even believe it. The friendship you develop, uh, it's just, words can't even describe it. It's so much fun. The topography chose this scenario. Lake Frederick Seems like a great place. It'll hold lots of campers and it has woods nearby and great for us to play on. So I came out on a recon, walking the field to see what we could do. And because of the topography, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty much all uphill. I did a little uh, Google Earth thing. And it's about a million square feet. It's all woods and rocks. And I'm an old 10th Mountain soldier. Uh, I, was, I was stationed there for a while. And uh, immediately Battle River Ridge or, or one of those uh, mountain battles that they fought back in World War II popped in my head, so that's the one we chose. The Germans had control of Riva Ridge. Uh, the Americans were, were coming up uh, to take it over, and that's how the 10th Mountain Division really got its start, because they, they had to learn how to climb up there and ski back down and everything else, and the Germans were really taken quite by surprise. Well, in order to act that out, for West Point, we had you know red and blue, and naturally everybody pretty well puts the blue team as the U.S. I'm not quite sure why, but okay, fine. So the U.S. team is the blue team, so naturally we then the red team become the Germans. The matchups tend to be American and German, or American and Russian, which if we if we go into or American and Vietnam. I've I've played Russian generals for West Point. I've played Vietnamese generals for West Point. We get to walk farther for paint, air, and water, um, but we're the underdog. Flight point ref three, what is the situation that you have your KVP turn around a little bit? A6 is just taco. General. We're getting close, we're just under 10 minutes before we started the game. It'll be a dull for a bit until they start getting to where they need to go, and then as soon as they make contact, it's just gonna be a cacophony of paintball gunfire. Roger, I've done these things I can. Yes, I did, I just brought it to Corona. It's all on the generals game now. They know where they gotta go and when. It's up to them to win the battle. Stop. Stop. How you doing? All right, the way this game works this time around, it's different from every other West Point game you've ever played. We have flag station points, this is true, but they don't all count. Flag station points are control points. That's how you award a win to somebody. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of guys running around shooting each other. For the game on, what I want you all to do is bust butt to the bunker complex near the gully. When you get there, you'll know it because there'll be 500 guys standing there shooting. One flag is worth 300 points at 1100. It's 11 o'clock for you civilians. Now, 300 points may not seem like much, but every other flag after that's only worth 100. So you can imagine how important this is to me, to Germany, and to your victory. Flag station points are counted uh, typically like at the top of the hour. If you're holding the flag at that hour, you get the points for it. So basically, you can let the flag go right until the last minute, send 100 guys over, overwhelm it, flip it, get the points. The key to this game is going to be to stay on the field. Stay on the field. We will own these boys like we always do. Oh, oh, oh. 
uh, the blue team went and threw smoke to get the uh, to get the to get us some cover to get to the flag to flip the flag, and the, uh, the we weren't able to get there. The red team seems to have that pretty well knocked down, and uh, they're tearing us up pretty bad over there. We're gonna get do as best we can to knock them off. We got about 10 minutes before this segment's over, and we want points for the whole thing. <laughs> I want a Maslake 2025 and do another big push right the hell over that ridge. Hold them here and then send them to me right up there. But I need, for it to work, I need like 25, maybe even 30. One thing West Point's actually known for is that you're going uphill both ways every time. And uh, you know, that's something the cadets always complain about. But uh, that's something the players like about this field is it's a challenging geography. We're playing on the side of a mountain here. So I mean, you know, you can't, you can't ask for anything more challenging than running uphill, running downhill in order to uh, to assault your your uh, flag points and stuff like that. I'm Tackleberry with EOD. We do explosives, ordnance, and demolitions. We call it. This is my launcher. It's like a made after an M79 grenade launcher. What you do is you drop a Nerf rocket down here and plunge it down with either a, uh, they call it a barrel squeegee, which you just use to clean your barrel. And you take it and you just stuff this rocket down in the end and just plunge it and then you just pull up and fire, just like you would throw somebody a football. It's a glorified potato launcher. And it's just got an old military stock on it, mostly Home Depot. Everything here is actually from Home Depot, <laughs> except for the stock. Even though this doesn't leave a mark on something, what I do is, if you're gonna fire at a tank and hit it with a rocket, there's noise from the tank, there's a motor, there's a crew in the tank shooting machine guns, all kinds of stuff. So what I do is you scream for a referee, get their attention, which is a little hairy sometimes, you're undercover, you don't wanna give your position away. For the most part, people are honest. If you get hit with something, they'll call themselves out. The Predator Dreadlocks, man. I get asked this about us all the time. I, uh, I used to get shot in the top of my head constantly, and I used to go home looking like, uh, like somebody hit me with a ball peen hammer all over the place. So I took rope and laid it out flat in a bandana, and I just didn't cut it, and it, I was using it to make a lightweight helmet. I was just gonna sew it in tight. And it just ended up being where it looked, the ropes of length were you know, uneven, and I just left it. And I was the meanest thing anybody's seen, so I figured it would intimidate people. And, Kind of gets me shot at a lot more than I want, but it's a lot of fun. And it stops me from going home with all the concussions. If you can get those 4-0 strength to Ricky tick our position, that would be great. Hollywood out. They're pushing a tank up to take us out so they can get two. So we have two guys down below with the law rockets to take out the tank. So basically, just to give them support and let them advance up. That's what we're working on right now. Uh, well, they just went up there. They should be, you should be seeing them in about 10 seconds. I see six, over. It was flag three, correct? Roger that, flag three, grid, echo, five, over. Right now we're up near flag station two. All right, Ty, just hang in there. Just uh, sit tight. If you got a grenade, wait for that tank to move up. You'll be fine. Todd, stay low. Stay low up there. Roger that. Working to secure two. Over. Hey, guys. Pass the word down. The new tasking is to secure and hold three, a uh, two. Two is right there, we already hold it. Cat, roger that, pull them up, pull them up. I got blue guys coming up this hill on right. me. We're gonna run up, if we're gonna stop them. Up. Hey, you guys good? Keep going, keep going, look right. Keep going, look right. Look right. down when we go. 60 seconds, get ready you guys. Reload, clean your bowls, whatever you gotta do. All right, what just happened was, Blue was holding a flag station, and in the middle of it, you have to take a stick out and flip it back over. On either end is your color, red or blue. 
So what we tried to do was pin their guys down long enough for us to charge in and turn that stick back over. And what we want to do is draw enough fire from different angles so that our guys who are quicker can sneak in. That's a huge victory because it was right on the right time. Uh, when that flag was flipped, we had five minutes to go before we would have lost the points for it. So it was, it was, it was huge. There's a lot of people in paintball that actually create their own persona on the field, and I think that's actually a, a very cool thing. There's a guy named Barney who wears purple and uh, he's about 50 years old. Nobody really knows my real name. Everybody calls me Barney. To be honest with you, he's one of the best players the sport has. I've been playing for over 23 years now. No matter how old you are, this is a great sport to play. He is like a, a legend in the paintball community. So he knows that you know uh, people know or recognize the purple, that, and that's gonna be a good guy to work with and play with. He was an ex-Marine, from what I know, and uh, you know I have a lot of respect for that. The funny thing is, it, 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 when people see me on the field, they, they, they tend to get this tunnel vision. They'll expose themselves just to try to get the angle on me, and they forget that I have a lot of good players around me, and they're the ones that end up getting a lot of the kills. He comes out of nowhere and uh, and just it plays as hard as he can every time. Everybody follows him, and he's, he's a fantastic leader, and he just flipped the flag for us and got us the points to finish the job. That is the secret of the purple. Midday mass at 1.30, we're gonna release you guys, close down shop for about 30 minutes, and we're gonna tighten up the boundary tape and turn that field into a very small field and a lot of paint is gonna fly in a lot of directions. Be prepared, make sure that you get gassed up, reload all of your hoppers and your pods, get ready for some real genuine mayhem. Getting ready for Midday Madness is really kind of a challenge. It's only an hour and they've got to re-air, repaint. It's gonna be a paint slugfest. There's three flags. The points for all three flags counted at the end of the hour. Those three flags put together got the same amount of points as the whole morning so far. So it's very, very important that I keep this territory. The points don't even get counted until it ends, which is in about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Everybody get that flag down! Move, move, move! Right now, both flags belong to the other team. There's a lot of us, we're shooting back, rushing, but we just can't, we just can't get in. Let's go, let's go! Move, move. One minute to get over that hill! The last flag is right over this ridge. I'm trying to get another 20 guys, make one last big push, because all the points get counted in about 10 minutes. Go! We don't want them to make the move, so basically hold this ridge. All right. You can push them down. Go right ahead. You guys got it. Put down the hill. All right, ten four, sir. We so. got it. Basically, we're at the blue base, and we're trying to pen in right now. They've got us from about uh, three sides, and uh, we're just holding our own right now. The red team had pushed completely all the way across the field into the blue team's respawn area. So blue team players were walking up to the field, tagging in and immediately getting shot. Nobody likes that, that's not fun at all. So you know, to the red team's credit, they did a lot of work to get to where they were going. But again, we have a nice, we want everybody to have fun out here. So we had to push everybody back to their restart stations and, and go at it one more time. Uh, 
Uh, with the ghillie suit, it breaks up my uh, outline, so I'm harder to see with, out in the woods. The dirt helps it out because of its natural coloring, so it's actually better to have it a little bit dirty. It was $60, so it's not really that big of an investment uh, compared to what some people will drop on like thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So it's something small that helps to give you the advantage that's relatively inexpensive. They bring out artillery simulators, they bring out M240s, bring out 249s, they bring out a lot of things that we just don't have access to and we can't use in other scenarios. All right, well this is the Mike 240. This is an actual machine gun from the US Army. Right now what we do is we have a blank adapter on it. These are always orange for training purposes to make sure you know this gun isn't a real gun, you're not really being fired at. You fire in blank ammo. As you can see, it's closed at the top, so there's no danger of anything coming out. There's nothing that will fly out, harm anyone. More than anything else, it just adds a sense of realism. People love coming out, and you know, it's one thing when you can hear all the paintballs flying back and forth, but when you hear a couple rounds, it just makes it seem more realistic. It's fun, it's an adrenaline rush. We're holding them at their base, they ain't got too far off their base, so we're holding them steady. Right now it's a pretty tight battle right there. We're right outside their headquarters and their armor is trying to push out. If we can stop it here and stop the armor, we've got a great plan and we've got a great strategy for the second half of the day. All players, be advised, do not improve your positions at this time. We are under a ceasefire, you must stand still. Thank you. Nobody move! Do not go anywhere! Take a knee! As violent as this game can be, and as dangerous as it looks, safety is pretty much number one in every player's head. One of the greatest things about the way we play this game with our communications net, I know instantly. Ref on the other side of the field, half a click away, finds an injured player. He calls all his other refs. Those refs are next to my players that have radios. Everybody ceases fire immediately. We take 10 minutes, we take 15 minutes, we take two hours if we have to. We get that player safely off the field. Just a flash room. That one too. <laughs> I was trying to take a shot, ref got my way and I got nailed in the crossfire. I got shot right and square between the eyes as I popped up with a rocket launcher, shoot the tank. Rocket left the barrel, hit the tank square and the tank shot me square in the mass. It was you know, one for a tank, so I'll take it all day long. I see some clouds, but they don't affect me because I've got all the points right now, so I'm very happy about that. Give me some more points, I'll even be happier, but Engler is a very sly boy. He knows what he's doing, so we're not going to relax. We're never going to take the boot off that throat once we have it. Uh-oh, who's tank? German tank. German tank, got to go. We're trying to send our guys up the left flank and we're trying to push down the right-hand side of the road where they're sending in all their armored divisions or tanks or any kind of armored personnel carrier. Anything up on the left is a real high, steep climb. A lot of guys got to try to push up it or down it. It's hard fighting a lot of cliffs, a lot of rocks, buildings and stuff like that to go through. It's a good time. All right, guys, well, if you need anything else, you let me know. I want to go get shot at a little bit more. Okay, West Point Paintballers, game is over. First day is now complete, and uh, I think we did it was overall a success. Uh, got the game rolling. The terrain offered the challenges that we thought we'd get. Uh, but again, I think the cadets, you know, pulled it all together with a little help from everybody else and a lot of help from the players. Please hurry up. As soon as we get this done, as soon as we get sent out of the field, you guys start swinging paint at each other. Couldn't ask for a better day for paintball today. You know, the yesterday was real windy. We had 40 mile per hour gusts, and so it was really tough. You know, the paint was flying everywhere. But today is pretty calm, pretty sunny. Looks it's shaping up to be a nice last day of paintball for us. It hurts to get shot in some places with a paintball. Reckon with this, guys. It's gonna piss you off. It pisses me off when it happens, especially because I'm a ref and I shouldn't be getting shot at all. But you don't see me clobbering anyone about the head and neck just because I got shot with a paintball. It happens. We treated seven twisted ankles and a split knee yesterday, so please try and be a little safer today. I already showed this to you guys yesterday, but just for a visual, the smoke grenades look like this. It is military smoke, and it gets, oh my god, hot to the touch. 
do not, do not pick, pick this up. up. And of course, we also have the grenade simulator. Many of you have played here before, uh, got to enjoy the artillery simulator, which give you a little bit of warning with a kind of a screaming, whistling sound. The grenade simulators will give you no fair warning. The equivalent in TNT is about a quarter stick of dynamite. Don't pick it up. Uh, you can pick it up uh, twice, one for each hand. Yesterday we played, your face and field, blue down that end, red down that end. We're gonna switch it. For all intents and purposes, it's just basically to, to demonstrate that there was no, uh, nothing unfair of playing on one side versus the other. So red starting down that side, blue starting down at this end for today. So now you get to learn a whole new set of terrain coming from the other direction. Today there's a thousand points available, so uh, if blue is able to win, you know, three quarters of them, they can uh, they can win the day and win the the ultimate event. Uh, of course, my guys are not going to let that happen, so uh, we'll see how far they go. Weekend so far is going amazing. We are way in the lead point wise, and I got to get back on the field and make sure that I secure that advantage and increase it. I'll see you guys on the field. I was almost 12 years old when I started playing paintball. When I tell my friends I'm gonna go play paintball, they're like, oh, doesn't that hurt? I, I've heard it hurts a lot. And I'll be like, nah, it's nothing. My dad's the co-captain of the Red Raiders. For me, Maria being able to participate in this is, uh, it's actually an honor. She took on something that I did, is well, well respected, and uh, you know, people play with her and she has fun. And then in the end, I think that uh, she likes what she's doing. My favorite part about paintball is kicking guys, but it's just fun. One thing is for certain, instead of chasing boys, She's actually shooting them, so for me, that's actually really cool. No special treatment out here. We're all equal. All right, let's go shoot some people. I'm Maria Galarza, part of the Red Raiders. I'm here at West Point, and I'm gonna kick some butt. That's, your, that's the enemy pushing. They're doing a smarter thing today than they did yesterday. They're massing troops behind, waiting until the last two or three minutes, and they send everybody at one time. They overwhelm the position. They only have to hold it for 10 seconds, and they got the point. It's a good, uh, it's a good strategy change by Engler. It's uh, making me a little nervous. <laughs> Uh, it's been tough, we inserted with about seven or eight guys off the start. When push up took the point, they drove three tanks in on us, took all three tanks out, held it for a little while, they drove a tank up on the ridge, which killed us. The tank was shooting down, and yep. I had to come up the ridge to get it. Yep. I couldn't get it, so we pushed it back a little bit. We gotta hold this for seven more minutes. Okay. Hold up there, don't get killed, and then push back to here and, and hold in here, okay? We gotta hold this. I got three. Points count at 945, they were holding back a reserve push. So hopefully that worked. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you go back in, right? Yeah, I just I ran out of air and took a nice shine in the neck. Whoopee! That's how it's dialed about, right? <laughs> that didn't hurt. No, it didn't hurt. They keep using the armor to pretty much just follow, not follow, the infantry follow their armor, and that's why they're able to take the ground. Because what they do is they'll stack behind the tank, like it's a, just a, it's a mobile bunker at that point. If we don't take that out, they'll line up 20 or 30 guys behind it just in a train. And they're just, they're firing off the sides at everybody and they just drive it straight down the road at them. He's got a pistol. I love it. He's dedicated. He's got a pistol up against like a bazillion machine guns. I love it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Tank coming down the road. Enemy tank coming down the road. I need AT down here ASAP. Don't just let him shoot over the ridge. Put some fire on him. Germans, you have 15 minutes to 
just to bring your objective or dark brutal for you. Our infantry is here up on the hill and our the rest of our anti-tank and armor are down here. So we kind of got them in a V or an L. So it's working out well for us. We got them pinned down now, we're moving in. Go ahead and advance up the hill, people! Advance up the hill! up on the ridge, taking out tanks. <sighs> hey, I'm tired. We had 900 points for the Allied for the 10th Mountain Division, and we had 1,800 points for the uh, German Tide. Yeah. 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 But it was close! <laughs> but I want to reinforce the fact that just because the numbers don't show it, there was so much heart on both teams, and we really appreciate everybody's effort. I'm refing, and picture if you will. <laughs> A large mass of rocks. Pitted on both sides are two tanks and two fiercely fighting blue forces and red forces. Rolling on each other full auto, 10 to 15 balls a second. It sounds, it actually sounds like some sort of tourney team practice. Uh, more like Rice Krispies, just with the, the sheer volume of balls being flown in every direction. And rockets to and fro. Tankers yelling at each other. And somehow, this dude in a raincoat, very slowly, sort of tiptoes into this crevice in the side of the rock formation, and then does the gecko, or like a salamander, and just lays himself perfectly flat into this hole. With no coordination at all, both sides decide they're gonna push real hard. And so they both just mount on each other at the top of this rock formation, all the while, the salamander is still pressed into the crack of this rock. Whether or not you with, have, you have do you have it game. with you? Hold it over your head. With nothing to defend himself. It's been a long few weeks setting up for this, but it's been worth it. Uh, we've had a lot of fun refing, setting up for this, just seeing people getting pumped up to play paintball, getting pumped up about the army. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty inspiring to see how much support there is. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I'm out here in the field, all you people wearing those red armbands is executing my plan to a T. Victory for Germany, thank you very much. I'd like to thank Mr. Engler for bringing the Allies as hard as he did, even today. Amazing, I was thinking this was in the bag and he almost put me on my bottom, so good job. <laughs> Uh, first thing I had to do, though, before I do this, is thank the cadets for putting on another phenomenal game. Now I'm looking for a, uh, a kid who's wearing a blue jersey. There he is. Come on up here. His gun broke yesterday. And instead of leaving and sitting back in camp, he attached himself to my side and did anything and everything I asked him to do all day long. And this is the kind of player we need who... Uh, who, even though he can't shoot people, uh, will do everything for the game. Thank you. All right, now let's uh, let's bring forward uh, three of our first. These guys, guys you're not going to see anymore. Uh, we have about what is it, 47 more days? 47 more days, and they'll be bona fide United States Army officers. In the middle here is Cadet Boza. He, uh, he's going into the Signal Corps. And that's, that doesn't just mean he's gonna learn how to operate the hand mic of a radio. That means he'll be communicating with satellites, dealing with secure, encrypted, computer local area networks. Uh, he's gonna be a, at the pinnacle of everything that allows commanding generals to meet, communicate back to the Pentagon in the United States, and sometimes even to the president himself. All right here, in 47 days. All right, Reimer still has a little more incubation period before we see him wearing a military uniform, or an officer's uniform, because he's going to medical school. So he can patch me up next time I fall off a cliff uh, trying to ref for you guys. Now last and most importantly, uh, the cadet in charge of the entire club himself. Uh, believe it or not, there's over 160 registered members in this club. And there's one cadet in charge of the entire club. That's Cadet Randy, here to, on the right end. It's the stuff he does behind the scenes that counts the most. Uh, from air, from laying the field on, from training the refs, and, and from dealing with all the administrative headaches that, quite frankly, I don't want to deal with. So I pass the buck on to him, and he gets it done. Now, he's going to, he, well, let's put this in paintball terms. Imagine your paintball could go about two miles on a perfectly flat trajectory at Mach, oh my god. Hell yeah. It's 120 millimeters in diameter, and it's being launched from a tank that's driven by a jet engine. That's where he's going. He's going into the armor. He will be driving the M1 Abrams battle tank and be in command of a, no less than four tanks at any one time. Gentlemen, we appreciate you being here. Let's give you all a quick hip hip hurrah. Hip hip hurrah! Hip hip hurrah! Hip hip hurrah! This game was run very well. The cadets did a fantastic job. They were on top of things with the refing. Um, they were out there and spread out all throughout the field, uh, which always helps instead of like when, when refs tend to cluster. They added uh, a bit of flavor with it, firing the blanks from you know M60s and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, was, it was a very enjoyable game. It was well run. And I hadn't been to West Point in a bit, and I will definitely be going back. Thanks for watching and supporting the United States Military Academy's West Point Paintball Combat Classic. We're getting ready for the next one, so you be ready. Uh, what happened? It's not in the ball. I almost don't understand what's going on in the mind of a paintballer because these guys will go out and, and rail down 10 balls into some guy's spine, uh, and you'll see him go limping off, the, off the, the play area, and you know he's hurt and he knows who shot him. And later that evening, you'll see the two of them sitting around a campfire laughing about the, the pain that they brought to each other. Uh, you gotta respect them. Damn it! You got me! I'm a camera guy, God damn it! She's uh, been humping it out there too. So, 
been really rough. It's a lot of fun. Choice words, father. <laughs> I was taking orders from command. I thank Decker and Hollywood, Yukon, those guys for uh, letting me, you know, uh, support them with my with my law. And once those guys get into the moment, they get so focused, they really don't care what's on the other end. And that's why we get a little, you know, sometimes we see these father-son teams come on, and the son, you know, this 14-year-old kid, and you kind of wonder, what's this 90-pound guy going to do out there? And and you know. No one seems to really care once once they get them in their sight. And it's okay, because um, oddly enough, those 14-year-old kids are kind of flexible and they recover quick, and you'll see them crawling through briars and over sharp rocks that a crusty old 37-year-old like me, I, I would never try.